What's up everyone, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at two distance traveled word problems. So these are the two questions that we're going to focus on and let's get started. Okay, so we're starting with this question here. So take a moment to read through this. And the first thing we could do is highlight the important information. So Hank is driving from Buffalo to Syracuse at an average rate of 48 miles per hour. And on the return trip along the same road, he was able to travel at an average rate of 60 miles per hour. And the trip from Buffalo to Syracuse took one half hour longer than the return trip. And the question that we have to answer is how long did the return trip take? So the stuff in green is exactly what we have to answer in order to complete this question. Now for word problems, I like to model the situation with some sort of diagram. So since Hank is driving from Buffalo to Syracuse, we're going to let this line segment model the distance from Buffalo to Syracuse. Okay, so now that we have this line segment labeled, let's tra transfer the highlighted stuff over to the diagram so that we don't have to keep rereading the question. So we know that from Buffalo to Syracuse, Hank drove at an average rate of 48 miles per hour. And on the return trip along the same road, he drove at a rate of 60 miles per hour. Now, I highlighted the part here where they said that he took the same road back because that means the distance traveled doesn't change. So that's gonna help us when we need to set up our equation. But a very subtle piece of information is that the trip from Buffalo to Syracuse took one half hour longer, which makes sense because he's driving at a slower rate. So if it took Hank, let's say T hours, to go from Syracuse to Buffalo, well then, on the way from Buffalo to Syracuse, it took him half an hour longer, so we could say here that it took him T plus one half hours of driving to go from Buffalo to Syracuse. So if T is what we're solving for, then from Buffalo to Syracuse, we could call this amount of time T plus a half, and this is going to help us set up our equation in a moment. And the main equation that we have to make use of is that the distance traveled is equal to the rate that he travels times the time that he's driving. And just so we're clear on the units, the rate that he's traveling is in miles per hour. And the time that he's actually driving is going to be expressed in hours. And this is very important because if the units don't match here, this is going to throw us off. So that's something that you have to be very careful of when you set this up. And for word problems, the hardest part of word problems is usually setting up the right equation to actually solve. Because once we set up the, the equation, the rest is basic algebra. But knowing exactly what to set up is tricky. So what we're essentially doing here is setting up an equation to model the distance that Hank is traveling. So let's talk about the return distance. So for the return trip. Well, for the return trip, he's driving a distance of 60 miles per hour times t hours. We're just basically using this equation here. And I'm going to leave the units out until the end, but technically this is 60 miles per hour times t hours. And this models the distance that Hank is driving from Syracuse to Buffalo. And for the first part of the trip, so the first part of the trip we're going to write over here, Hank drove at a rate of 48 miles per hour. And we can say that these two expressions are equal, but we have to be careful what we plug in here. We have the rate times the amount of time driving. So if he drove for t hours on the way back, well, on the way there, he drove for t plus one half hours. Because remember, we were told here that the trip from Buffalo to Syracuse took one half hour longer than the return trip. So whatever time we put here, we're going to put in parentheses and add one half to it. So then the rest is just algebra. We're going to distribute. And we have 48t plus, and we're doing 48 times a half is 24, is equal to 60t. And then we're going to move the variable t to one side of the equation, because we have two terms with a t on different sides. So we're going to group them together. And now we have 24 equals 12t. And we divide both sides by 12. 
and this tells us that t is equal to 2 and we'll write the units now 2 hours and that's exactly what the question is asking how long did the return trip take now if you if this were a test setting i would highly recommend that you check your work and to check your work for a question like this what you should do is you should plug in that time and then plug that into the formula and see if you come up with the same distance for both. So if we look at the return trip, Hank was driving on the way back at a rate of 60 miles per hour and we're claiming that he was driving for two hours. And if we look at the cancellation of units here, this tells us that the distance that he traveled was 120 miles. But now if we look at the first part of the trip, for the first part of the trip, Hank was driving at a rate of 48 miles per hour, but now he's driving for two hours plus a half hour, so he's driving for 2.5 hours. And you can see here the units cancel, and if you go ahead and type this in a calculator, or you could multiply it out in your head, 48 times two and a half, and if you are doing this in your head, you have 48 plus 48 is 96, and then 96 plus half of 48 is 96 plus 24, which is, in fact, 120. Okay, so either way that you do this, this is going to show you that the distances do, in fact, match up. Okay, now take a second to read this second question here. And we have that Kerry and Crystal live equal distances from school. And we have the rate that they walk. So Kerry walks at a rate of three miles per hour. So this is important information. This tells us how fast Kerry walks. And then we're told that Car uh, Crystal, so someone else here now, Crystal rides her bike at an average rate of nine miles per hour. And then more important information here, Kerry takes 20 minutes longer than Crystal to get to school. But then the million dollar question here, how far from school do Kerry well, Crystal and Carrie both live. So once again, this is a lot of information to juggle, so I highly recommend that you make a diagram to model this scenario. Okay, so we could take a look at this diagram here, and I would recommend drawing something like this out, where K represents Carrie like her, where her house is, and then C represents Crystal and the location of her house. And we model with the arrows here how fast both of them are going. And I'm also transferring the information that Kerry takes 20 minutes longer than Crystal to get to school. Now the challenge with this question is that they threw in a little trap for us that the rate is still miles per hour. However, the trap that they threw in is that the time should be in hours that they're traveling. But notice they told us that Kerry takes 20 minutes longer than Crystal to get to school. So one thing that we should do here on the side, instead of thinking of this as, as 20 minutes longer, well, we should convert 20 minutes into hours. Now, you may just be able to do this in your head, but the technical way of converting would be to multiply by one hour over 60 minutes. But if you know to just divide this by 60 and change the units, then that's perfectly acceptable. So then minutes over minutes would cancel, and 20 over 60 is one third. So what we're going to make use of here is that 20 minutes is one third of an hour. So what that tells us is that if it takes Crystal T hours to get to school, and it takes Kerry 20 minutes longer to get to school, well, then the amount of time it takes Kerry to get to school is going to be t plus one third. All right, so it's very, very, very important that when you're doing these type of questions, that whatever your rate is, if it's miles per hour, then your time should be in hours. If it was meters per second, then your time should be in seconds. So it's very important that you're consistent when you're setting up these equations. So then, since they live equal distances from the school, then that means when we use this formula, rate times time, for both of them, we can, in fact, set them equal to each other. So if we look here, we have 9 times t because Crystal rides her bike at a rate of 9 miles per hour, and we're going to just let the variable t represent the amount of time it takes 
crystal to get to school. And that's going to be equal to Kerry's rate of travel, which is 3 miles per hour, times the amount of time that it takes Kerry to get to school, which is T hours plus one-third of an hour in, with, in relation to Crystal's amount of time. So then now, once we have this equation set up, we just go ahead and solve. And we have 9t equals 3t plus 1. So then this equation, we're just going to go ahead and solve. And we have 6t is equal to 1, which tells us that t is equal to 1 sixth of an hour. If you want to think of this in terms of minutes, an hour is 60 minutes. So this is essentially just 10 minutes. And this means that it takes Crystal 10 minutes to get to school. But you have to be careful. If you stop here, you're not actually answering the question. We want to know how, from, how far from the school do they both live. Well, now we just have to plug this missing variable back into the original equation. And we could use either of them. So if we want to solve for the distance now, well, we could say that Crystal rides her bike at a rate of 9 miles per hour. And she is riding her bike for one sixth of an hour. So the variable t, we can now replace what we actually solve for here once we solve this equation. And if we want to work this out, well, hours over hours cancels, and we're left with just miles, which makes sense because we're answering how far, which should be in miles. And if we work this out, 9 over 6 is equal to 1.5. So this tells us that they both live one and a half miles from the school, and this is our solution. But what I would do to check my answer here, because remember, it doesn't take that long to check, is I would plug in the variable, or I would plug in the value for t equals one-sixth of an hour into the other part of the equation here for Kerry's rate to see that you get the same distance. Because if you get two different distances, that means you know we messed up somewhere. So using carries values we have the rate is three miles per hour times and remember it takes carry one third of an hour longer so the time t was equal to one sixth so it was one sixth of an hour plus it takes her one third of an hour longer to get to school and the unit is hours for time, okay? So once again, we're just doing one over six, which is the value for t, plus one third. So once we make this substitution here, there's a few ways that we could go about this. If we want on the side, we could just work out the math for the fractions. One over six plus one third, if I multiply the top and bottom by two, is two over six. So one over six plus one third, if I find common denominators, is equal to three over six which is equal to one half. So that means we could just simplify this. This is three miles per hour times one half of an hour. And three times a half is equal to 1.5. And the units, hours over hours cancels, and all we're left with is miles. So notice we get the exact same value here when we check. So this tells us that the distance from Kerry and Crystal's house to the school is both 1.5 miles. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on solving distance traveled word problems. If you found this video to be helpful, please click the like and subscribe buttons below. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you've got any requests, future videos you want me to make, leave the topics in the comments section below. And thank you all for watching.